Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I want to do is I want to kind of go over some basic uh, logarithmic properties uh, that we're going to use in, uh, in, these, in this course and in multiple other courses uh, that I have for logarithms. Now, the properties that I'm going to go over are going to be properties that are going to be to um, a log base b. And, but please note that if we use natural logarithms or a logarithm base 10 you know, or any other thing, they're still going to apply. So the two basic properties that we need to understand that kind of really give us the idea of you know, what exactly, again, are logarithms are going to be log base a of 1 is equal to 0. And also, uh, we have log base a of a equals to 1. And the reason why this one works is because, again, remember, we can always take a logarithm and rewrite it in its exponential form, right? So if I say a to the 0 power, that's always going to equal 1. Any number raised to the 0 power is always going to equal 1. So anytime you see a logarithm with whatever the base is for a, if you're trying to evaluate it of 1, you know the answer is going to be 0. And the exact same thing, whenever you see a log with the same base as what you're evaluating, log base a of a, log base 5 of 5, that's always going to equal 1 because any number raised to the first power is always just going to equal itself. Okay. Um, so those are kind of like your basic identity ones that become very, very helpful uh, when we're evaluating logarithms as well as solving them. Um, the next couple also are going to work for helping you out solving, which is the first one log base a of a to the x is going to equal x. And a to the log base a of x equals, uh, equals x. And then log base a to the x is equal to log base a to the y. Therefore, x equals y. OK, so here is an example of inverse properties. And pretty much what we say is, you know, we'll, I'll kind of get more into why this works when you see the other two properties I lay. But anytime you see the log raised to a 1, we know that equals 1, right? Well, it's raised to that exponent of x, so it's just going to equal x. You can also look at it as an exponent form of a raised to the log base a. They're pretty much just going to um, undo each other, and it's going to equal to x. And we can work through some problems with numbers where I think it will make a little bit more sense. But I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit short. Last one is the one-to-one uh, -one property, which is very powerful when we look at exponents. Um, we have the exact same thing. You know, any number, if you have two, two numbers, 3 and 3, and one, and one 3 is raised to a 5 and the other 3 is raised to an x, you know that x has to equal 5. The same thing with the one-to-one. -one. As long as the bases are the same, you know what you're evaluating for have to be equal. Uh, the next three properties are going to be very important for expanding, condensing, and solving. And I'm just going to kind of label these, even though here's the inverse, there's the one-to-one, -one, the same. But any time that we have the product within a logarithm stating log base b of x times y, we can rewrite that as log base b of x plus log base b of y. And that also works for the same. As long as we have two logarithms with the, with the base b and we're adding them, we can rewrite them as one single logarithm, base b, as the product of x and y. Quotient. If I have log base b of x over y, I can now write that as the difference of the two logarithms with the same same value for x and y um, for the logarithms. And remember, that works the other way, too. We can also take it going here, going back to this way. And the last one is uh, product quotient power. OK, so what the power rule pretty much says is if I have log base b of x to the, let's call this the n property, then I can take the n and rewrite it down in front by it as a product times log base b of x. And again, the same thing. If you're given a logarithm, if we're trying to rewrite it, um, I can always take that number that's multiplied by logarithm and rewrite it as, as x into that power with inside the logarithm. And using these properties will help you understand a little bit better the inverse property, especially if you use some numbers like 2 and 4 that would work really well to do. Um, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are your basic properties of your logs. Thanks.